This video lecture is dealing with the concept of the mole. So the mole is a term that you often see in chemistry and um, probably not understood by many of the students uh, who take chemistry. In its simplest form, a mole is just a number that represents a certain number of particles. If I have a dozen objects, everybody knows a dozen is equal to 12. Well, a mole represents this a number of objects. It's just that it is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those objects. So if I have a mole of helium, I will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd helium atoms. Now the nice thing about the mole is we use the periodic table to figure out what a mole of helium atoms would weigh. So take out your periodic table, pause if you have to get it, and then we look up helium and the top left number is helium's mass and that's what the mass of a mole of helium would weigh. Except we just put a gram sign at the end of it. We go to tenths place, so one mole of helium weighs four grams. One mole of CO2, one mole of anything, has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. In this case, CO2 is a compound, and since it's two nonmetals, they are called molecules. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. A mole of carbon dioxide will weigh, look in the periodic table, carbon weighs 12, oxygen is 16, but there's two of them. So 32 plus 12 is 44.0 grams. So one mole of carbon dioxide weighs 44 grams. If I have half a mole of carbon dioxide, it will weigh 22.0 grams. And if I have two moles of carbon dioxide, it will weigh twice the 44 or 88.0 grams. So let's call this the first thing that we had to cover today. The second thing about the mole is how to work the formula from table T. Look at table T, the second equation down, moles is equal to given mass over gram formula mass. The gram formula mass is exactly what we just did. It's using the periodic table to add up the masses of all the different elements in the compound. So if I have 28.0 grams of methane, CH4, it will equal how many moles? So you can pause the video if you want and do it on yourself, do it by yourself. We're just going to substitute in moles is equal to given mass 28.0 divided by the gram formula mass, mass of methane. Carbon weighs 12, each H weighs 1, so methane weighs 16.0 grams. You should do this on a calculator, don't just depend on me. 28 divided by 16 is equal to 1.75. So there are 1.75 moles and 28 grams of methane. So try this one on your own. Pause the video and then come back. If there are 46.3 grams of silver, that will equal how many moles of silver? So pause the video. Moles 
is equal to given mass, 46.3. We look up silver to the tenths place, 107.9. So moles is equal to 0.429. Make sure you do the math yourself. So we'll call that, yep, yeah, that's the second thing. So now we're going to look at the third. And we have four total things that we're doing today. So number three is how to use the mole in the calculation of concentration. So on the back of the reference table, find concentration. Molarity is equal to moles per liter of solution. from table T. So I have two questions. The easier question is, if I have 0.68 moles of C12H22O11, in 287 milliliters, The molarity will equal, so pause the video, substitute in, see if you can solve. Molarity is equal to moles, so 0.68, over the volume, but the volume has to be in liters. 287 milliliters, we're going to go to a larger unit, so we need a smaller number, is 0.287 liters. So molarity, once you do the division, is equal to 2.4. So there are 2.4 moles of sugar per liter. The harder problem is if they give it to you, the solute, in grams. So if we have 58 grams of fructose in 0.27 liters, what's the molarity? So pause, try it on your own. The problem here is we have to convert 58 grams of fructose into moles. So use the equation that we did in part two and then substitute into the equation for part three. So moles is equal to given mass over gram formula mass. Carbon is 12 times 6, that's 72, plus 12 H's plus six oxygens. Oxygen is 16 times six, which is 96. When you add it all together, we get 180. So 58 grams of fructose is equal to 0.32 moles. Now we can use the molarity equation. So molarity is equal to 0.32 moles divided by 0.27 liters. So molarity is equal to 1.2. The fourth concept that deals with the mole is stoichiometry, which is a mole ratio in a balanced equation. So if we balance N2 plus H2 makes NH3, if we balance this equation, I've got two H's on the left, three H's on the right, number common to both is six. So I have to double the H3, I have to triple the H2, and N2 ends up being balanced. So one mole of N2 
needs three moles of H2 in order to form two moles of NH3. So what if I have two moles of N2? That's twice what the equation shows. So how many moles of NH3 will form? Well, it should be twice as much. Twice of two is four. If I have six moles of H2, how many moles of NH3 will form? Well, six is twice the three in the balanced equation. So again, I'm going to get twice as much ammonia, or four. Sometimes they might ask you something a little trickier. What if I have 0.38 moles of N2? So this time, um, if I can't logically do it in my head, and I want to know how many moles of H2, I can set up a proportion. 1N2 is proportional to 3 H2s. So if I only have 0.38 N2s, then how many H2s will it form? So X is equal to 3 times 0.38, which is 1.14. So those are the four uh, parts to the mole that you should understand. And that is it for today's lecture. So have a great night, and we shall see you tomorrow in class.